Thanks. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Yuhei Takaya. Yuhei is a researcher at the Atmosphere, Ocean, and Earth System Modeling Research Department for the Meteorological Institu Research Institute, MRI, in Japan. Yuhei is an expert on climate dynamics, climate modeling, S2S prediction, studying all aspects of S2S prediction, in, including forming um, ensembles and how best to set up ensemble prediction for S2S. Yuhei was one of the founding members of the WMO S2S panel uh, since the beginning of the international S2S panel, and is also currently a member of the WIGSEP, uh, which studies subseasonal to interdecadal prediction. Thank you, Yuhei, and look forward to your lecture. Thanks, Anish, um, for your kind of introduction. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, it's not full screen yet. Do you see my screen? Yeah, I see your screen. It's not full screen yet. Okay, swap displays and then swap display. So that the arrows on top. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, thanks to the organizers, in particular, the Anish and Judith for making this happen. Um, in this talk, I'm Yuhei Takaya with Meteorological Research Institute of Japan Meteorological Agency. Uh, in this talk covers the two important S2S related topics, uh, monsoons and extreme events, and S2S predictability. So, I decided to keep uh, the essence of the weather and climate with themes, uh, the uh, statistical aspect and dynamical aspect of the extremes and the monsoon. And I will give an example of monsoon extremes, uh, which is the uh, May you buy rainfall in 2020. So let's begin with the, the monsoons. Um, the monsoons uh, originally refer to the change of seasonal winds, uh, and uh, sometimes the monsoon is defined based on the precipitation, seasonal precipitations. And here, here we see. Okay. Let me. Uh, we see the global monsoons. We know that the the three do, uh, dominant uh, regions, uh, regional monsoons, African monsoon and Australian monsoon and American monsoons. Here, uh, you see the differences of the uh, 850 hectopascal wind and precipitation between the uh, boreal winter and the summer. And the the vector shows the wind difference and the color shows the uh, precipitation difference. And we see the uh, salient, uh, prominent uh, seasonal change of winds and precipitation in these regions. And these monsoons, these monsoons are preliminary due to the uh, land sea thermal contrast. And the, in the lower panel, the, we can see a large portion of a total annual precipitation is brought about in the in rainy seasons. Uh, uh, this uh, figure shows the uh, rainfall percent uh, in summer uh, with respect to the uh, annual total uh, precipitation. For instance, the Asian summer monsoon has uh, roughly more than two thirds of total precipitation in the rainy season. And, uh, once the extreme rainfall, or both in the interannual and interseasonal time scales, occurs, it results in the devastating, devastating the uh, consequences, the, uh, disasters. So, uh, predicting uh, uh, the the monsoon uh, in the uh, S2S time scale 
is quite important for uh, uh, disaster mitigation. So here I'm showing the the early occurrence of uh, extreme events in the U.S. Uh, whose impact uh, cost greater than one billion U.S. dollars, and we see the the magenta color and the uh, uh, orange colors. Um, they uh, means the the number of the events by the flooding uh, severe storms. So every year we had a lot of uh, many uh, uh, severe uh, weather and climate events. And for example, so the studying the these severe storms are important. So the uh, American Meteorological Society issued the supplement, a special supplement to the uh, building of the American Meteorological Society every year. And you can see the detailed uh, analysis of the, the severe event in uh, particular years. So uh, first we like to define the extremes. Uh, I took uh, the quote from the uh, AMS glossary of meteorology. And, and it uh, defines the extreme as, in, in climatology, the highest and, in some cases, the lowest value of a climate, climatic element observed during a given time interval or during a given month and season of that period. So here I'm showing the, the, the May rainfall. Uh, the, this is in June the Chinese uh, rainy uh, season. And uh, we see the time series here. And if we have the, uh, the 30 years monthly observation, the, uh, the monthly seasonal extremes occurs only a couple of times. So, so uh, the, the extreme is a really event, is a really a rare uh, event. So it's difficult to estimate the return period and the return level. And the return period is the extremes, uh, how often the extreme occurs. And the, the return level means the, the extreme, the level of the extremes. And usually uh, uh, we define the extreme events that are above uh, or below uh, upper five to 10% levels based on the observations. So, so if we have the 30 years observations here, for example, uh, we uh, separate the, the 10 years uh, periods. And the, in the, these chunks, we can, we can find, identify the extreme events in these uh, 10 years. So uh, offering the, the, the level of these uh, values, we can define, we can identify, uh, define the the level of the extremes for the ten year period. And the the defining the threshold of extremes are uh, very important uh, for the precipitation and analysis. So uh, I'll introduce the extreme value analysis uh, theory. So if we have the, the, the N samples and we define the maximum of the, the data, X max, and uh, if we had an in infinite number of the data samples, we could have the estimate of the prob probability uh, distribution uh, function of extremes. So uh, the, the function, this uh, probability function gives the, the, the distribution uh, function that uh, uh, the, the maximum value follows, uh, follows. And now we know that the, uh, the three types of the distributions can be applied for the extremes. And now uh, these, uh, 
three forms are reformulated in a unified function of the so-called uh, generalized extreme value uh, distributions uh, shown here. And once we uh, can estimate the fit these uh, distributions, the beauty thing is the we can uh, uh, calculate the the return period uh, from this uh, uh, distribution. So after some computations, uh, we can have the the return period of a certain uh, certain for certain uh, extreme levels, return level. So uh, this expression is quite useful if one can, uh, we can if you can uh, obtain the shape parameters uh, the parameters here uh, using a sufficient number of samples. So uh, with this uh, distribution, we can compute the how often and how ex uh, high the return level and return period. And here I'm showing the extremes of the uh, monsoons, uh, uh, example of uh, extremes. So uh, in this talk, uh, I use the, the May you buy you rainfall. It, it, this is the rainy season in the East, East Asian uh, summer monsoon. And here we have many uh, dots here and the this is the uh, monthly averages of rainfall uh, with respect to uh, calendar months. And the, we see the red, curl, red dot, uh, this, uh, in, this denotes the, the value of uh, 2020. So the, uh, the, the 2020 uh, rainy season is uh, 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 extraordinary high, uh, 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 present the extreme, extraordinary high uh, precipitation. The impact of a hydrological extremes are substantial in uh, rainy season because the rainy season is uh, basically we had uh, more rainfall than the other seasons. Uh, on top of that, uh, on top of the seasonal change, if we have the extreme events, then uh, that causes uh, disasters, uh, flooding. So the investigating these events are very important. And in June and July data, the most of years in upper 10% uh, were uh, suffered from flooding actually in the, uh, uh, in, the uh, in China. So using the uh, GV uh, distributions, we can fit the, the distribution and we can compute the uh, return level and return period. Uh, for example, this figure shows the, the, the extreme events uh, for uh, given a 10 year period. Uh, the level of the extreme is about the eight millimeters per day. So we can know that the, uh, the, the severeness of the extreme event and the, the time period using the, this uh, uh, statistical method. The other uh, way to define the threshold of extremes here is uh, just uh, counting uh, the uh, observed uh, precipitation. For example, if we have the 30 years data and we took the uh, the highest three uh, years, then we can define the thresholds, 10% uh, of the uh, thresholds, highest uh, uh, extremes. And the, uh, we can also compute the exceeding uh, pre, uh, probability, and we can fit the, the, the exceeding, exceeding uh, probability uh, using so-called the Pareto distribution. So these are the 
a basic uh, mathematical or the analytical uh, 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 theory uh, that can be used to analyze the extremes. Now uh, I'd like to discuss the pre uh, prediction. Uh, why extremes are difficult to predict, to think about? Because uh, it, is, it is rare. Uh, the rareness may, be not, may not be a complete correct answer. Actually, the, the, the extremes are difficult to predict because the rare event often occur due to uh, the chaotic variability, which is likely unpredictable with a long lead time for example, the sub seasonal time scale. So I will sh show an uh, example of for explaining this. So, so if it's uh, unpredictable, what we can do? We just give up? You no, know, actually the seamless prediction will help. So the seamless prediction is very important to predict the uh, uh, extremes. So to explain this, uh, I'll take an example of early summer 2020, the, the May you buy rainfall. And here we, I'm showing the time series of May you buy your frontal zone rainfall. And as I said, the 2020 is the, the uh, record high, has the record high precipitation. And here I'm showing the uh, spatial distribution of uh, anomalous rainfall during these uh, two uh, months. And we see uh, uh, anomalous uh, precipitation over China and Japan. And here I'm showing, uh, this is just the zoom up of this uh, box area. And the vector shows the anomaly of uh, moisture flux and facts. And we see uh, uh, a lot of uh, moisture transport in these regions. And the and enhanced rainfall accompanied with the southward extension of Western North Pacific subtropical high, which is uh, typical of uh, in the Western Pacific capacitor mode. I will explain this in the next slide. And the uh, in the Western Pacific capacitor mall accompanied with uh, the uh, the warm Indian uh, Ocean condition, and uh, uh, this condition typically occurs after the El Nino event. And the, with this uh, warm Indian Ocean SST, we have enhanced precipitation over the Indian Ocean and suppressed convection over the Western North Pacific. And over the uh, Yangtze River Basin and the uh, Mayu Bayou uh, rainfall, uh, Mayu Bayou frontal zone, uh, we have uh, more rainfall. And this is very typical uh, 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 conditions we can observe in the uh, ancient summer monsoon. And the other impact is the with with this uh, uh, mode we uh, tend to have the uh, a high temperature over the Indian subcontinent and the mainland of Southeast Asia. So the, uh, this, uh, this model have a pervasive influence on the, uh, the Asian summer climate. And the, uh, the JMA analyzed the, the, the causes of the uh, may you enhanced may you buy rainfall in 2020, and the uh, the JMA gives the some uh, vulnerable factors. For example, as I said, the southwest world uh, extension of Western North Pacific subtropical high, and moisture transport to the may you buy frontal zone and upper level trough over the Yellow Sea and South World shift of jet and the warm Indian Ocean. But this expression uh, does not give the uh, primary cause. And the, the attribution study is important to uh, uh, understand the, 
the causality and the uh, S2S predictability. So, uh, an attribution study of extreme events is essential to understand the predictability and its underlying mechanisms. So, if uh, you can identify the key factors with the high uh, potential predictability or high predictability for a particular extreme event, maybe you you may be able to predict the, this event. So the understanding the predictability and the understanding the causality is uh, uh, are very important for the subseasonal prediction, subseason to season prediction. But in general, it is not easy to separate the uh, the contribution of many factors, uh, as I uh, uh, introduced in the previous slide and and uh, but we can use the model experiment to uh, untangle the cause and the effect and maybe it's worth uh, uh, worth noting that the extremes are not necessarily predictable in the uh, s2s time scale uh, it, meanwhile uh, if there are preferred con conditions or precursors of, of extremes, then the extreme event may more likely occur in such conditions. So uh, I did the, the sensitivity experiment to assess the tropical influence, the Indian Ocean aesthetic impacts, and the, uh, we, uh, we conducted the two experiments uh, EXP control and EXP in the ocean climatology with these uh, SST conditions. Then uh, we uh, find the uh, clear impact of the warm Indian Ocean. So the, using this sensitivity experiment, we can attribute uh, the, uh, we can identify the cause of the uh, enhanced may you buy rainfall. And uh, here I'm showing the, the circulation maps. But, uh, and the one thing uh, we didn't know is the why, what did cause the uh, warm Indian Ocean. The, as I said, the warm Indian Ocean condition in early summer 2020 can be, uh, the warm Indian Ocean condition in early summer 2020 uh, did not accompany with the preceding uh, El Nino. So, but the, actually we can uh, uh, trace back to the record strong uh, positive phase of uh, Indian Ocean dipole in uh, fall 2019. And here I'm showing the uh, the uh, sub uh, subsurface conditions in the Indian Ocean, and and basically we see the uh, dynamic uh, uh, ocean variability in the Indian Ocean. And here uh, I'm showing this the ocean heat content over over the upper surface temperature anomalies for. Uh, the uh, seasons. And we see a very strong uh, 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 downwelling Rossby wave in the South uh, Indian Ocean. And we also see the Kelvin wave in the, uh, the equator uh, shown here. So the, we can identify we can know that the the uh, Indian Ocean dynamics actually uh, can explain the uh, uh, the extreme event in the May you buy you rainfall, and uh, let's look at the the sub seasonal or not seasonal predictions uh, with a different uh, lead time lead time. And here I'm showing the predictions of the major value rainfall 
um, uh, starting from the initial date of uh, 26th of April, April, the end of April, and the, this uh, results is uh, based on the predictions from the uh, 16th of uh, May. So, uh, so we see a, a larger shift of the PDF. Uh, by the way, the red color bars shows a pink color shows the the uh, the PDF of the high cost and the uh, light blue uh, bars uh, shows the uh, the forecast. And we see uh, a larger shift in the uh, closer uh, the prediction from a closer uh, initial date to the event. And the The, the causes of the uh, enhanced may by rainfall is not only the, the, the tropical SST, but also the exotropical circulations. Here I'm showing the intermember correlation, correlations between uh, may by rainfall and the atmospheric fields, the 500 hectopascal height, uh, 200 hectopascal zonal wind, and the sea level pressure. And the uh, basically, uh, for example, this figure shows the, if we have the uh, deeper trough here yellow, over the yellow sea, we tend to have the, the uh, more uh, precipitation over the Mayu Bayou frontal zone. And then, for example, in this figure, uh, if we have the uh, more Okay, stronger the uh, subtropical high here, then we tend to have the more precipitation of the uh, Mayu Bayou rainfall. So the uh, so these conditions are uh, uh, precursor for the uh, enhanced uh, Mayu Bayou rainfall event. The, we heard about a lot of, of we heard a lot about the uh, 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 MGO influence. In the summer, we know that the, there is uh, so-called uh, boreal summer into seasonal oscillations. Actually, in, in this year, we have more active or uh, boreal summer into seasonal oscillation, uh, more active convection over the Indian Ocean. That favors the the active conviction over the uh, China. Uh, here I'm showing the MGO diagram and we see uh, the conviction for active, was active over the Indian Ocean in June and July. And the, this is the uh, precipitation anomaly prediction prediction of precipitation anomaly uh, from the end of April and the middle of the May. And we see a more precipitation, a larger anomaly of the precipitation over the Indian Ocean. This may indicate that the, uh, the, the active convection over the Indian Ocean is uh, better predicted in the a prediction with a shorter lead time. And I will show some other impacts. For example, in, in 2020, we had an extreme uh, high temperature over the uh, Southeastern Asia. And this is a typical of the the Indian Ocean, in the Western Pacific Ocean capacitor mode. And we see the uh, similar characteristics in the, in the observation. And the other impact is the record low uh, Western North Pacific tropical cycle activity. 
uh, in fact, he, uh, there was no name Tokyo Cycle during the June to July uh, 2020. So in the uh, pre and early uh, TC season. And this condition is uh, uh, often observed in the, the summer after El Nino's. Uh, here I'm showing the, the composite of the TC count for in the Western North Pacific region. So uh, the condition in the last year actually is sim was similar to the uh, typical condition of the IPOC mode. So uh, take home message. So the I uh, gave a brief introduction of my, uh, analytical uh, and physical aspects of the extremes. And the extreme value analysis is useful, but its uh, ability is subject to the sample size. And the extremes of uh, monsoons often cause devastating hydrological uh, disasters. In general, uh, extremes in extropics are caused by multiple causes of climate introductions. So the disentangling the causes are very important uh, uh, research topic for uh, the subseason prediction research. And predicting extremes would be uh, irreducible due to the inherent uh, chaotic nature of the climate system, even if we had a perfect model. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the, the, this topic actually is very challenging, and uh, challenging but important uh, research topic. And to predict the extremes, the seamless prediction approach by changing the lead time. So we have a continuous uh, prediction. We tend to, uh, we can uh, detect the risks of the extremes. Uh, so it's a key by uh, being the gap between the extreme range and the season of predictions. I think that's all I have today. Thank you, Yuhei, for the comprehensive talk. Thank you.